We've met lots of functions that have multiple inputs and or multiple outputs. And so our next question is, when we encounter these functions, how are we going to take a derivative? And what is that going to mean? So we want to start doing calculus on these functions. So here's an example of a function that has two inputs and one output. So if you have x and y, then the output is the arctan of y by x. If you think about it, this function is some kind of surface if we look at the graph, because for each x and y value, we have, we call it a z value or an f value. And so that, for each location, basically each grid point, we have an altitude, and that's going to draw some kind of surface. But if we think about freezing one of the variables, let's just hold, if we hold y constant, then as we change x, then we're just going to get a curve like this. If we set y to be a different constant, we'll get another curve that lies along the surface. So depending on the constant value we choose for y, we get a different curve. Also, if we set x to be some constant, then as we change y, we'll see a curve this way. We'll see a curve this way. If we do as a different y, we'll see a different curve. So really, the surface is made up of a bunch of curves here. And we could just ask, ask ourselves, well, what if I hold one of the variables constant and take the derivative with respect to the other? For example, if I hold x constant and take the derivative with respect to y, then wherever that constant value of x is, I'll just be calculating the slope of that function for the different values of y along that, const along that uh, line of constant x. Or if I hold uh, y constant and take the derivative with respect to x, I'll just be calculating the slope of that, that um, surface in the direction of that, that curve of constant y. So I'll just be finding the slope at each of the x values along that curve. So since what we're holding one derivative constant and just changing one, we could call that a partial derivative. And the way you do it is simple. You just hold the one variable constant, just pretend like it's a constant. Remember the derivative of a constant is zero. Um, the derivative of a constant times a function is just the derivative of the function. So we just hold that variable constant and then we take the derivative. Now our notation uh, it looks different depending on whether we're using um, Leibniz notation or notation um, akin to Newton's notation. So if we want to take the derivative of a function with respect to x while holding the other variables constant, we would write, instead of using the usual d for uh, difference or change, our d will just be a little Cyrillic d. So I'm going to start here and curve around. So we just use a slightly different d to indicate there are other things that could be changing with this function. We're only considering how f changes as you change uh, one particular input, x. So the derivative in this case with respect to x, let's see, we know that the derivative of the arctan is 1 over 1 plus uh, the inside squared times the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of y over x, so we take the derivative with respect to x of y over x, well this is like taking the derivative with respect to x of, no I should write partial here, this is like taking the derivative with respect to x of a constant times x to the negative 1, and so that's going to be equal to negative um, y x to the negative 2, or negative y over x squared. So. Now that we know what this derivative is, this partial with respect to x of the inside function, y by x, then we have uh, negative y over x squared times 1 plus, let's see, y by x squared would be y squared over x squared. If I just distribute, I have negative y over x squared plus y squared, since x squared times 1 is x squared, and x squared times y squared over x squared is just y squared. So I've got my partial with respect to x. To indicate the partial with respect to y, I just look at how f changes with y. So I take the derivative of this function with respect to y. Now, the derivative of the outside function is 1 over 1 plus the square of the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of y over x with respect to y, since x is a constant, is just 1 over x. So if I multiply through here, I've got um, 1 over, I'll take this x times the 1 and times the y squared over x squared, so I'll get x plus y squared over x. Or if I multiply top and bottom by x again, I'll get x over x squared plus y squared in its simplest form. This is Leibniz notation for taking a derivative. Um, we could also um, write it, in Newton's notation, we would write f sub x. So for, for the partial with respect to x, and f sub y for the partial with respect to y. 
Once we've taken one derivative, we could take another derivative. Now, there are the two different kinds of notation. It looks a little bit different. So um, if we wanted to take, if we had the derivative of f with respect to y, and then we wanted to have the, take the derivative with respect to x, then we would write it this way as d squared f dx dy. You can tell I'm supposed to take the derivative with, this indicates taking f and taking the derivative with respect to y first because that's the one that's closest to the name of the function. Then comes um, the derivative with respect to x. So um, if you're doing that in Newton notation, you have f sub y, so then you, then you put an x after it. So again, you can tell that you take the derivative with respect to y first because y is closest to the function and then x is the next closest. So this indicates start with f, take the derivative with respect to y first, then take the derivative with respect to x. Of course, if we had, um, if we had the derivative of f with respect to x and we wanted to take the derivative with respect to x again, then that would just look like this, d squared f um, dx squared in Leibniz notation or in Newton notation, you'd have f sub x, x. So this, again, this indicates take the derivative with respect to x, then take the derivative with respect to x again. Let's look at an example of taking some of these second order partial derivatives. So we have the same function again. f of x, y is the arctan of y by x. We've already figured out um, that f sub x is y over, is negative y over x squared plus y squared and that f sub y is um, x over x squared plus y squared. So we could take the derivative of this function with respect to x again. So we'd write that as f sub x, x or as d squared f dx squared, so the second derivative with respect to x. Um, and if we do that, we could just use the, the quotient rule to take that derivative. We'd have the derivative of the top, which is 0 times the bottom, minus the top. So that would be um, plus, let's see, y times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x all over x squared plus y squared. So we get 2xy over x squared plus y squared. So we already know f sub x, we could then take the derivative with respect to y. So f sub x y, that means here's f, take the derivative with respect to x, then take the derivative with respect to y. Or in Leibniz notation, it would look like this. We're taking the derivative with respect to x first and then y. So the y is further from the f because it's the second one, the second operation to encounter this. So if we take the derivative of this with respect to y, we get the derivative of the top, which is negative 1 times the bottom, x squared plus y squared minus the top, um, which is negative y, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x. Oh, the derivative of the bottom with respect to y, sorry, is 2y. So we get um, over x squared plus y squared. Oh, oops, squared. I think I forgot that on this previous one, too. x squared plus y squared squared. There we go. OK, let's see. When the dust settles, what do we have? Um, we have a negative x squared and a negative y squared and a plus 2y squared over x squared plus y squared squared. Let's see, 2y squared minus y squared is a positive y squared. And then we have the negative x squared and x squared plus y squared squared. And there's f sub x, y. Now, we could also calculate f sub y, x. That means start with f take the derivative with respect to y, then take the derivative with respect to x. Or in Leibniz notation, we're taking the partial with respect to y first, and then x. So we have, we have d squared f dx dy. OK, so now we're starting from this function, right? f sub y, we've already, this, is, this is after after one derivative. Let's take the derivative with respect to y again. Let's see, so we get the derivative of the top, which is 0, minus the derivative of the top times the bottom, minus the top. That would be minus x times the derivative of the bottom with respect to x is, oh, what am I thinking? I'm taking a derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of the top with respect to x is 1 times the bottom. That's x squared plus y squared minus the top, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom with respect to x is 2x all over x squared plus y squared squared. So if we simplify, this time we have an x squared and a y squared and a minus uh, 2x squared. So we end up with y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared squared for f sub yx. 
can also find f sub y, y. That means start with f, take the derivative with respect to y, then take the derivative with respect to y again. So, or in Leibniz notation, that would be this. So here's, here's one derivative with respect to y. Let's take the derivative with respect to y again, just holding x constant. So the derivative of the top with respect to y is 0 times the bottom, doesn't really matter, minus the top, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom with respect to y, which is 2y, all over x squared plus y squared squared. So we get minus 2xy over x squared plus y squared squared as our answer here. And if you notice, um, when we calculated the partial with respect to x first and then y, we got y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared squared. We got exactly the same thing when we calculated the partial with respect to y first and then x. In other words, the order in which we took those two different types of derivatives didn't really matter. The two came out to have the same value. That's really, that's not an accident. That happens quite frequently. It's called the mixed derivative theorem. I've heard it called Clairaut's theorem or uh, the Schwartz theorem. Um, it just says if your function and, and its um, partial derivatives f sub x, f sub y, f sub x, y, and f sub y, x. So if those are all defined throughout an open region and they're all continuous at the point of interest, then, um, then the, the two mixed partials will be equal. So we have f sub x, y is the same thing as f sub y, x. So as long as you have a function and its first and um, its first derivative, its first partial derivatives and its mixed partial derivatives are defined in continuous, then you can take the derivative in any order. So that's exactly what happened to us with our function that was the arctan of y by x because it was a nice continuous function. Okay. Let's do some more practice here. It says find the first and second order partial derivatives of this function. So for this function, we'll just go through and first find the partial derivatives, partial derivative with respect to x. And that just means we hold y constant and see what the derivative is. So the partial of this with respect to x is 2x. Partial of 5y, 5y is just a constant times x. So the derivative with respect to x would just be that constant 5y. The derivative of sine x is cos x. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so we get 7 e to the x. On the other hand, if we take the derivative with respect to y, so this first order derivative with respect to y, let's see. Now x is a constant, so that derivative is 0. 5x is a constant times y, so the derivative with respect to y is the constant 5x. Sine x and 7 e to the x are both constants. So now we could ask about, OK, well, what's f sub xx? Let's see, the, the derivative of 2x with respect to x is 2. This is constant. The derivative of cosine x with respect to x is minus sine x. And the derivative of 7 e to the x is 7 e to the x. Um, we could do f sub xy. f sub xy, uh, the only thing here that depends on y is the 5y, so that derivative is 5. We could also have done f sub yx. That means take the derivative with respect to y first and then with respect to x, and again, you see the partial of this with respect to x is 5. These two match, and because we have this function that is nice and continuous, and it's, it is continuous, and it's, uh, its first and uh, second order derivatives are all continuous as well. f sub y, y. Well, let's see. Start with f sub y and take a partial with respect to y. Well, there's nothing that depends on y in f sub y. f sub y is constant as far as y is concerned, so the derivative is 0.